Okay, so as I said a moment ago, welcome everyone to uh, today's Shaman's Directory live event. We are happy to be back with uh, those of you who are usually here with us. Um, we were on uh, summit duty for the month of November, and so we are delighted to be back for our Shaman's Directory live events. Uh, we will also continue in January on our regular schedule of the second and fourth Saturdays of the month. And we want to welcome all of those of you who are brand new to the Shaman's Directory community. And uh, again, to invite you to say hello and where you're from in the chat so that other people who are here with us today can, can see who's here and where you're from. Um, you can have your screen on uh, speaker view or gallery view, whichever you prefer. If you prefer to see everyone who's here, sometimes that's fun. Um, today's topic is finding a shaman that's right for you behind the scenes at Shaman's Directory. And uh, this, des this event was actually designed to give people the ability to more clearly share about the directory. Lots of people say, you know, what is Shaman's Directory and how do we explain it to, to people? So today's event is designed to give you an opportunity to better share about who we are, get to know who we are, and also um, because our mission really is to have people bring shamanic earth-based wisdom into their lives as a regular practice. So also how you can share it with friends and colleagues who would like to learn how to use the site to make earth-based wisdom a part of their life. So um, we're going to focus today's presentation around a keynote. Great. Again, welcome to today's live webinar. And at Shaman's Directory, our mission, our vision is One Fire, One Medicine, bringing all tribes, teachers, healing traditions, and nations together around One Fire to offer our wisdom and medicine to the world. And we are committed when we began the directory, we made a promise to ourselves that we would do our best to offer a healing and a teaching in everything that we do. So whether it's offering a program like this one or being present to our families and communities, we want to offer healing and teachings in everything that we do. So I'd like to begin our program today by inviting and introducing you to Monica McWhorter. Monica is the Indigenous Liaison for Shaman's Directory, and she heads the team that offers outreach, support, and program design for the traditional teachers and medicine people of the world who want to join us on the directory. So this morning, she has generously offered to share a brief teaching from Turtle Island and a sacred smudge to start our time together. So Monica, I'd like to invite you to come on and share your teaching with us. Uh, so Anibo Jo, Indigenica, the woman who breathes with the singing waters at the North Dar. I am Makwa Dodum, so I am Bear Clan. I am also Buffalo Clan, and I am Anishinaabe and Métis. And so this uh, teaching today, we're going to begin by smudging with sage. Uh, many of you will know what this medicine is, but this is an Anishinaabe teaching on it. And so sage is the way that we prepare ourselves for ceremony, and we're going to light it using a wooden match because we continue to honor the earth throughout it. So we would always use from the earth um, to continue that tradition and just honor the medicines in that way. And so I'm going to smudge myself by saying a prayer and then I will smudge all of you because we always begin by smudging ourselves first. So just one moment while the sage lights. And so we pray to my eyes, so I may see the good in the world, to my hair for my connection to spirit and source, to my ears, so I may hear the good in the world, to my mouth, so I may always speak with love, truth, honesty, and respect, 
to my heart so I may live out of it and to my feet so I may always walk the red road. And now if you just want to put this much over you, just notice how you feel. And so I've got the gift today of teaching on sage. So sage is a medicine from the Western door. It is a very, very powerful medicine. So before we use any medicine, it's good to sit with it. It's good to learn about it. And it's good to ask questions. Uh, sage is something that we use to always purify ourselves before ceremony. It also calls the spirits in and allows them to know that you're asking for help. As a medicine of the Western door, it works with what we're letting go of, anything that we might be carrying, and it refreshes us and it brings us into a really, really good space. For anyone who's a practitioner, it's important to note that SAGE can work with past trauma. And so we use it with discretion. Um, and we do that by seeing and asking and learning all of the different medicines that can be used for smudging. And we'll really, really focus on what the individual or the circumstances are calling. The smoke within the sage itself will speak to you the more you spend time with it. So I invite for all of you when you're using sage to really sit with it and just see what happens. Uh, do your best to empty your mind and come from a heart-centered space and allow the medicines to speak with you because they'll teach you so, so much. And this sage you may or may not have seen before. The sage is from Minnesota. It was picked by two knowledge keepers on our team, which are Jay and Sweetie Bird. Um, and there's many, many different types of sage which are available. So this is more of a woman sage and the buffalo sage that you often see in stores is more of a masculine sage. And so really and truly, it depends on the energy that you need. But it's such a gift and it's such a gift that we have this knowledge and we're able to share it today. And so I welcome you all and I ask that you enjoy yourselves throughout this presentation and really, really uh, take the time to allow your heart to speak to you now that all of this energy has been cleared. So chi maguet. Beautiful, thank you so much, Monica. I always um, really feel a shift in the energy when a smudge is offered. So thank you for that beautiful, um, beautiful opening. So again, I would like to welcome all of you who are here today who attended our Gathering at the Cosmic Fire Summit. We would love to hear any highlights that you experienced during the summit. If you had a favorite speaker or you came away with an insight or a practice that has already found a place in your heart or in your life, we would love for you to take a minute to share in the chat. Uh, if we have time later, we will go over some of those highlights, but for now, you can share them with each other in the chat. So the summit is over, but the topics that were covered in the summit are really timeless topics. And if you did not purchase lifetime access and you would still like to watch all of the 32 talks at your leisure, we are going to put a link in the chat for anyone who would like to do that to purchase lifetime access. And to just let you know that Shaman's Directory is a nonprofit organization. And our sole mission is to make shamanic earth-based wisdom more available to the world. And so 100% of anything that you offer in donation or contribution to the directory goes to forwarding shamanic earth-based wisdom in the world. So. Um, anyway, we'll put that link in the chat and we invite you to, um, to take advantage of that if you would like. Um, so now I'm going to let you know a little bit about the directory itself. 
So Shaman's Directory was conceived in 2021 and it was launched actually just a little more than a year ago in April of 2022 and open to healers and practitioners and to clients in August of last year. So to celebrate what we felt was just a miraculous year and a half in service to the shamanic community, we thought that we couldn't think of a better way to acknowledge our ambassadors, our directory members, and the team that has worked so hard to create the directory than to put on a summit. And so we spent the last six months creating a summit and all of our ambassadors, the people who have been with us since the beginning of the directory, all stepped forward to offer wisdom teachings and medicine on the summit. And so it was just this really beautiful way for all of the people that have been guiding us and that were the first people to say yes to the directory to introduce themselves to the world through, through our summit. So the, the directory began as a community service project generated by a group of about 20 friends who had all studied shamanic earth-based wisdom for varying amounts of time. And we were so passionate about the potential of shamanic medicine and the beauty of earth-based wisdom and really the urgent need for our human family to wake up <laughs> and remember who we are before we permanently destroy our ecosystem, that we decided together that we needed to do something to bring shamanic wisdom and medicine to the world. Um, so there's an expression that I have really come to live by that uh, spirit or creator is always speaking, but most of us are not listening. And actually some of us are avoiding listening. Um, and the minute that you start listening, the sacred instructions start coming in. And so the minute we started as a group to start listening to spirit and saying, you know, we really want to offer something to the shamanic community, but we're not sure what it is or how to do it. The instructions started coming in. And the first instruction that we got was to research the prophecies. And some of us had a little bit of an idea of what that meant, but most of us really did not know what it meant to research the prophecies. And so we started looking around online and asking other shamanic healers and teachers. And what we came to find is that the prophecies of original people from around the world have been asking humanity for almost a hundred years to gather around one fire and to offer our wisdom and medicine for the healing of the whole, that we will not heal as a whole until we all come together around one fire. And so then the next thing we asked Spirit was, well, how do we do that? And Spirit said, you need to reach out to the world's greatest teachers of shamanic earth-based wisdom and ask for their guidance and advice. And we really were sort of daunted by that idea and wondered, would any of these people respond if this group of people that nobody really knew reached out to them and said, we are thinking about creating this directory. Would you be willing to guide us? What do you think of this idea? And we were absolutely amazed by the fact that not only did these people reply to us immediately, but they actually said, we've been waiting for you and how can we help? And so over the past year and a half, we have continued to grow and gather ambassadors, earth-based healers and teachers, some of the greatest shamanic earth-based healers and teachers from around the world who have said, we're with you, how can we support you? And so we'd like to share with you now some of the words, some of these great wisdom teachers and how they feel about their participation with Shaman's Directory and how it aligns with their work in the world.
Thank, Thank you, you Shaman's directory. I It is perfectly aligned with me and my dream to be part of a global council of masters in ceremony, sharing these powerful ancestral traditions for the new generations and for the global family and the global community, creating this collective healing energy that brings love, that brings liberation, that brings wisdom and light to many of us who might be struggling, who might be in places of darkness, who might be uh, stuck on emotional, psychological processes. I'm very happy because it was the prayer of our ancestors for these times to have these sacred councils, these sacred circles globally. I believe my whole lifetime training until this point was for these circles and was for these times. So in celebration, I play my flute for each one of you to send to you the powerful medicine of the Andes that you connect with this powerful sacred medicine. Infinite blessings to all our masters of Shaman's Directory. Actually, it's very much resonate uh, with me because I have similar idea when I have maybe 15 years ago. I planned to make something similar like that platform, but I think uh, uh, I didn't do it because it was too much work for one person. And I also was always busy with the healing work and uh, workshops and uh, travels. Um, but I really uh, was looking how to combine different shamans, different healers together, because I saw that it's nice to work together, nice to combine uh, our wisdom and uh, our knowledge and uh, bring it to the people. Because uh, we talked uh, before that as a, a new time, time of the wolf uh, to be free, but it's also time to, to unite, yeah? Because uh, in the Fox time, it was a time to separate it. People was more separated. They was isolated sometimes. And the uh, knowledge was not available, yeah? To learn something, you need to find a teacher for years and ho hopefully it will, will be a good teacher. And uh, these days, uh, all the wisdom get open and we have to come together. And this really uh, much resonate with me because only together we can grow and uh, we can change something. And I'm really, uh, yeah, when you invite me to this project, I immediately feel yes, because it's uh, uh, very much resonate with me. This is a big question. For me, uh, to be part as a member in the, the shaman's directory is listening and following a call. A call that uh, I have started to go when I went on my path into the medicine, the healing work, the shamanic practitioner work. And when I reconnected to the lineage, to my own spiritual guides, to my ancestors, to what I felt is my support on a different level. 
and um, feeling that behind me is all this community of shamans that are coming together like a web gives me a very beautiful strength and support because I don't feel that I'm alone on a path, but we are all together. And the sitting around this fire is more than an imaginary fire. It's real. It's an energy that I feel. And being part of the directory is a way for me to say yes to this fire that I'm sitting with so many other shamans around the world. To me, um, being a Maasai and living in Maasai land, of course, uh, the shaman directory, it's as I understood, it's all that uh, what we need to preserve and to also give to ourselves and, and uh, leading the right way of healing ourselves and healing nature. And as we all living today we are the responsible to actually bring all this knowledge together as Pamasai says let's come together and share this is to to heal the world that needs a lot of people like shamans to come together and heal it because it's actually needed and that is the way forward and I will say the shamans are having a knowledge that it's not written yet. And this will give an opportunity for the rest of the world to understand and to go in the right way that we, we think as the Maasai and the shaman think as the shamans, it is the way forward. I saw the directory, I thought like, oh, I want to be part of this. I, I, you know, a lot of times directories are for, you know, the, the good of one person or their organization. But I really believe that this was for the good of the community and to bring people together around a central fire, which is something that I think we need more and more of, not less and less of. I think the biggest value is to know that you're not alone that really besides for the plant spirits and the tree medicine and that we really do need the heart of of each other in order to really navigate this these chaotic winds that are blowing out there and to remember that we are connected if you think about the planet that we live in it's a kind of a closed system and so if there was this big bang for four billion and a half years ago then there was a wind movement that sparked it all into like a bubble of shared space. And so we've all been around this cosmic fire since the get go. And what's feeding it in, is the wind that moves through us and through each, through the energy of the cosmos. Well, I'm, I'm bringing the wind to the fire. You know, that old Girl Scout song, rise up full flame because the wind brings it in and it rises up that flame so may our lights shine brighter thank you being in community doing um intentional work is uh it is the the practice of belonging fills my heart and also, you know, there are times where I need to not hold the container and feel more held. And uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about the shaman's directory is the way that I actually was invited into it was um, to be in a space where other indigenous healers were holding just a talking circle. And it was amazing for me to be with other um, practitioners around the world in a way that I could recognize, you know, that was not from my, 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 uh, my indigenous community, but it was recognizable to me and I felt so held. And so anytime I get to participate by either showing up to community or 
offering the container for community, I do feel like we're all fulfilling our purpose then. There is this other concept in Lakota called Kapemni, which is the sacred hoop, um, which is more like, Kapemni is more like uh, the sacred teepee structure inverted up to the heavens, right? So that as we're in this hoop, the, the, the teepee is in a hoop, right? Um, that as we are in community, so are the stars, right? The, the stars above are also in community and we move together, we dance together. So as above below is another way of saying that. And um, containers such as the shaman's directory, I believe that what is so valuable about that and what resonates with me about it is that it is creating another hoop uh, here in the, the matar or the material of our earthly selves, um, which with the intention of dancing with the, the, the ancestors and the spirits above and in that place um, where they meet, which is the poetry of our beingness, our human selves and our spiritual selves. And the more that we can create these, uh, these hoops or these sacred containers, um, it is a beacon of belonging for all beings, right? It's not like here we're just in our exclusive language of healing, healing ship. It's really saying, no, like everybody belongs here. All beings belong here. We are all related. And uh, yeah, so I feel like my, my uh, paradigm of belonging and creating these uh, sacred hoops is what drew me to the sh the shaman's directory because I see that that's what's happening there. Well, I think it is extremely important that all voices are heard and that we still get to learn from each other. And as she says, sit around the fire because I do not believe that like, you know, any one person or any one teacher, however wise and experienced, can hold any kind of like, you know, ultimate truth or take on the situation. I think is that all we have is a lot of different perspectives. And even if sometimes they hold opposing ideas, I still think that these are like, there are like wisdom teachings worth exploring. So what I love about Shaman's Directory is that if we can all carry around that cosmic fire or, you know, that fire at the heart of the cosmos or the fire that represents, you know, divinity and in connection to other worlds and spirits, uh, that, you know, all these perspectives can be seen and, sh and shared and support each other and that we can learn from each other. And that's why I was so thrilled to be invited to be part of this, because I think it's really important to have a platform where all of these different traditions and viewpoints can exist and where we mutually support each other. So it's not like a, you know, a race or a competition that's done in the spirit of cooperation. We've been asked to help to establish platforms or places where that original voice can come forward and be heard the wisdom the ancestral wisdom can be shared uh, in a way that allows us to wake up to who we are and remember ourselves and come back to the honoring of all life as sacred and and it's in that with that kind of intention and resonance of spirit that i think i got called to sit down here in your beautiful circle and i've been watching and observing as you've been growing and starting to open yourself that you are listening deeply and I'm sure there are times when challenges come because those protocols are different or someone has an idea of how it should be um, that you will have to hold that cosmic fire with uh, and allow the process to show you why that has come for your attention and, and into your attention um, and that's what I see you guys doing, you know, I, that's what I see you allowing um, with the different elders that are coming, uh, the different ways of ceremonial um, speak that's being offered. Um, 
these are some of the things that I see that y'all are willing to hold and not try to fix. That's the first thing Western people want to do is fix something, you know, but more about just to hold that process out of respect and, and then deeply listen and create a space for others to be able to give voice and be held and listened to. And that will begin to reveal how we move then in a unified front forward. Um, yeah, so I, I'm appreciating very much uh, your work and your humility that I see in motion with it. I pray that you maintain that humility. Just want to Just take a moment to allow that question to come in to my heart. And I think what comes from that heart space is um, honoring just this beautiful truth of calling forth the healers, calling forth those who honor this beautiful biosphere with whom we are intricately and intimately connected and providing a avenue, a platform, a path through the forest, so to speak, for healers of earth-based ways, shamanic ways, to have a voice, to have an opportunity to reach out to the world. There is um, a lot of healing that is happening and also a lot of healing that needs to happen. And so I see Shaman's Directory providing a beautiful way for that healing to find a home, as it were, find a hearth, find a fire to circle around, to bring forward the gifts and skills of so many um, people, practitioners, um, medicine peoples, um, and people seeking the assistance of those with, with the training, with the skills, with the gifts that they carry, the lineages, whatever it may be, from cultures all over the world. So, yeah, a lot of gratitude. Well, so I absolutely never get tired of listening to our ambassadors share about how they feel about working with us and the vision and mission of bringing shamanic earth-based wisdom to the world on a larger scale. Their wisdom and their guidance has inspired us since before we even put pen to paper to get the directory started and they are still with us to reach out to and ask for support and guidance and direction and we really like to say that you know it's not our website the website belongs to the world of shamanic earth-based wisdom and all are welcome to step forward and contribute to the continued creation of of this vision so we like to say that shamanic earth-based wisdom is vast and varied and scattered all across the world. Shamanic earth-based healers are really like artists in that they are usually much more concerned with offering their gifts and their teachings and healing wisdom to the world than they are in promoting themselves. <laughs> and so, we thought to ourselves, you know, what can we give to the world of shamanism that it doesn't already have? And what came to us is that what we can give the world of shamanic earth-based healers and teachers is a beautiful professional international directory, uh, a website that is created for them so that they don't have to spend their time and resources trying to create their own websites and all that they need to do is offer their wisdom and medicine gifts to the world. So I want to show you uh, the team members that are here with us today. Um, you will recognize some of us from the summit. 
Uh, we have an incredibly passionate and dedicated team here at the directory. Um, and I'm just going to let you know the faces that you will see as we move through this presentation today. So um, Mayumi and I are the co-founders and directors. Lucita Murphy is with us. She is one of the founders also of the directory, and she is in charge of all of the registration um, programming and everything that goes on around registration for the directory. And then we have Wake, Robert Wakely Wheeler, who is our host for our Shaman to Shaman interviews, which you will hear more about in a bit. And he's also one of our regular hosts at Shaman's Directory Live events. He is one of our board members and a team member here at the directory. And his real passion and dedication is to community. And so everything that he does here at the directory is really about bringing that sense of community to all that we do. Uh, you met Monica briefly. Monica McWhorter is our Indigenous liaison, and she's in charge of all of the outreach and programming for original people that come on to our directory. And last but not least today um, on uh, of our team members here today is Consuelo Marroquin. She is the director of Spanish support and translation. And she will be sharing exciting news about 2024 and our plans to uh, bring a Spanish speaking site to the world in the new year. So the mission of the directory really is to bring shamanic earth-based wisdom to the world's doorstep and to make shamanic healing an everyday practice. We would like shamanic earth-based wisdom to be part of our daily routine as going to a therapist, a yoga class, or brushing your teeth. So we are really committed to, uh, to making shamanic wisdom an everyday practice. So going back to the prophecies for a minute, the Anishinaabe prophecy of the seventh and the eighth fires really makes crystal clear the fundamental message of most of the prophecies of our time. And this is that the original people of the world, the traditional indigenous aboriginal people of the world hold the wisdom that we all need to restore us to right relationship with the earth and all living things. The key here is that the rest of us have to choose to live by it. We have to be able to see this wisdom and we have to choose it and make the decision to make the changes in our lives to live in a different way globally. And so for this reason, we really created the directory to invite shamanic earth-based healers and teachers who have either been born into or are trained by lineage-based healers and teachers who are ready and willing to bring their wisdom teachings and medicine forward for all of us to see. So that at this critical time on earth, we can make the choice to choose a new direction about where we're going as a species and really for the future of all of life on earth and what's possible for us going forward. So, so that Anishinaabe, uh, prophecy of the seventh and the eighth fire is the foundation of our one fire, one medicine vision. So in order for us to make the choice to adopt these principles and make shamanic earth-based healing a valued and trusted part of our daily lives, we actually have to trust the practitioners. Just like you would trust a medical doctor or a therapist or any other practitioner from any other healing modality, if you're going to continue to, to have it as a practice in your life and share it with the people that you care about, you want to know that you would be willing to refer your family and friends and that they would be in good hands with a practitioner. So to this end, we are constantly working on our accreditation process and honing it so that every single practitioner, healer, teacher on our directory is someone who we believe is highly credible and their wisdom and medicine are authentic 
and that everyone we know that would use the directory would be in great hands. So Monica has a team of people who are uh, an indigenous team who are working on the accreditation criteria for indigenous people. And uh, Lucita is working on with Monica on um, accreditation for the rest of us, the Western trained practitioners. And it's a beautiful process. It's been painstaking and it's still evolving. But uh, the beautiful thing is that there are uh, traditional teachers as well as Western trained practitioners. And so we're really working to uh, make sure that all of the healers and teachers are people that you would refer your loved ones to and feel confident that they would be receiving great care. So I am going to turn the presentation over now to Mayumi, who is going to take you to our website and share with you how to use the site and everything that's available there to you. So welcome Mayumi. Yes, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm gonna take a little moment to take you through our website. And as uh, you've heard, uh, Shamus Directory is a global online platform and it exists in a virtual area, but it's really real. And as we are also now gathering together as well, and uh, we want to bring all the shamanic herb based healers teachers together around the fire and keep that fire burning and we also invite clients those who are seeking healing and anybody who's curious in this world of shamanism and grow this sort of community together. And. Uh, oh, sorry. And we like to say that we're more than a directory. Um, Shamus directory has actually like a bigger concept uh, that goes beyond the directory. And uh, we are really growing organically. And uh, the concept actually has a lot of potentials and possibilities. So it's actually always ever evolving. And we don't, of course, know what it all will come about. But at this moment, uh, we are a professional nonprofit organization for shamanic earth based practitioners, and we bring all the medicine and wisdom together so that we can create a sacred medicine light uh, around the earth. And we also honor uh, and empower indigenous healers and teachers as colleagues on our platform, we really want to bridge all of the shamanic practices on this platform so we invite healers teachers but also other platforms as well to join this cosmic or this fire and we keep that fire burning also for our membership of healers and teachers and their friends and we also like to say that uh, we're bridging the feminine nature of shamanism with this masculine structure of a directory to provide a really clear and a concise and directive way to um, yeah, find a healer or teacher that feels right for you or to find more information that you want to learn about so that it's all very clear and structured. Um, we are also um, an inclusive platform because uh, our vision is also to make shamanism like an everyday word uh, like a household word, so everybody can bring this more into the daily life, these kind of practices, so that shamanism will be really free of any barriers or limitations, and that people feel inclusive to this, and that it is an approachable practice. Um, so, of course, the our vision is to make it available to all peoples, um, but the groups that are probably most close to us at this point are these three areas. And uh, the first area is um, the shamanic earth based healers and teachers. So without them, we wouldn't have any platform here, of course. And uh, we want to create a vibrant global community of healers that are united around this mission of one fire, one medicine, and to elevate, promote and celebrate shamanic earth based medicine as an art and a profession. 
then we have another group that we say as our clients and um, for our vision, basically the clients are probably the most important group of people um, to bring more global healing and awakening around the world. So um, we want to really provide easy access so everybody can easily find uh, their shamanic teacher or healer that feels right for them as well. And then we have another area that's called the curious. So we invite all people who um, are evolving themselves and want to grow and learn more about different practices and include shamanism perhaps as one of the topics to uh, discover further. And uh, we also offer for them um, some resource materials that they can learn from to engage also these groups of people as well. So this is a slide with a lot of different circles, uh, which is about what our website includes. And actually in 2024, there will be some more circles to add on, uh, which we will discuss later. But at this point, uh, I want to um, let you know that uh, there's a lot of content actually on our website. And the first part is about the directory itself. So uh, that he, clients can find their shamanic healer or teacher by uh, browsing through the profiles, which I will let you know in a minute uh, to show how a profile might look like and how you can find a shaman. On the other hand, we have also, the, of course, a directory for the healers and teachers. And um, some of them may not have their own website, so we want them to feel that this website is also for them. It's, we always say it's our directory and it's not just ours so uh, it's a collaborative uh, directory space and uh, healers and teachers will be able to get listed there and also to grow and be part of this community then we have a section about resources which is another tab in our uh, website and uh, there we feature different books articles audios videos courses and trainings and travel expeditions uh, there will be also in the future, hopefully, a little shop. And uh, we want to also address all the shamanic platforms as well. And then we have a section called Shaman to Shaman, which are inspiring interviews and uh, interview by Wake, uh, which is who is one of our team members. And you will meet him later more, who will talk a little bit about these interviews. But the beauty of this is really that um, those people who are curious or those people who are seeking healing can sort of get to know the healer or practitioner and uh, feel their energy and feel uh, uh, if it's right for them or not or what kind of messages they have to say. So it's really beautiful to offer these interviews and also for those who don't have an interview of themselves to have one so they can send it on to their potential clients or share with their friends and colleagues. And then we also have a section called the event calendar where we will highlight um, specific events. Uh, some of them might be our own events as well, but we try to list uh, the important shamanic earth-based events from across the world as well. And also some trainings and ceremonies and courses, whether they are online or in person. And the last section is called sacred activism. And although everything we do at the directory is a sacred act, uh, this section deserves a little bit more activation uh, to uh, say so, um, because we uh, want to support certain projects or certain events that are really focused about um, global healing and awakening for the humanity and for the earth and all living things. So now I'm going to show you a little bit about how to find a shaman on our website. So I hope to show it in a smooth way. And um, this is our homepage. And actually, when you click on the menu bar, um, this is how you can look into different links that we are providing. And on one hand, you have here find a shaman. And on the other hand, the get listed. So find a shaman is more for those who are seeking healings and get listed for the shamanic earth-based healers and teachers who like to sign up. 
And then we have also some other links that I just briefly mentioned about, like our calendar and resources and sacred activism. So if I click on find a shaman, you go to the page and you will see at the top of the page also a little description and then find out more link, which is going to uh, the, our user guide so people can make the most out of our website and find the right uh, practitioner to work with. And if you scroll down a little bit here, we have here like a search engine bar and um, you can type through a keyword, but what we like to show you what is very important and quite neat, I would say, is that you can search uh, by country or region. So if you're looking for an in-person session, you can see who's maybe close to you. Uh, you can also search by shamanic practice. Like this is how people may call themselves or how they are known in a community. So for example, if I go in here, there are different titles in there. And for example, I'm interested in plant medicine, then you can click on plant medicine and then the people will pop up. So these can also be herbalists, of course, or perhaps some uh, people who are trained in the psychoactive fields as well. Then we also have another area that's called shamanic origin, which features basically all the different uh, lineages or areas where their sham uh, shamanic practice is based from. And then this one, healing thought, is probably a very effective one, which is all about the certain problems uh, clients may um, may be confronted with, they seek healing for. So we have here, for example, addiction, substance abuse, burnout or bore out, chronic illness, death and dying, depression, um, parenting, past life work. So there's many different fields basically you can pick and, uh, and find uh, the shamanic healer or teacher for this particular issue. So now I want to show you a few profiles so you can get a little bit more of an idea. So let's say I want to look for a, shama a, for a shamanic practitioner. Oh, I need to put this on all. For the UK. And then I see the people who are based in the United Kingdom. And now I'm kind of like drawn to Imelda, who is also a shamanic, Shamans Directory Ambassador for us. And then you will see her profile picture, how she likes to call herself as an author, as she has written many books, and some of her bio here. And then later here, you will find uh, more information for example, about the modern languages that she speaks, that's Dutch, English, and Swedish, how she's known in a community. So aside from the author, also a certified shamanic practitioner, teacher of sacred arts and spiritual traditions, the origin of her shamanic practice is European Norse, and she has also an additional healing modality called art therapy, many areas of strengths and passions, that includes all the issues that people may are dealing with, and also an area about um, uh, the, the level of experience of uh, working uh, with shamanic healing. So she does all beginner, intermediate and advanced. And the demographics, for example, that she's focused on, which includes also children and the elderly here and the number of years in practice, which is over 10 years. And she also has here her website that you can go to. And then below you will find some pictures of her that she has added and you can scroll through, which is really beautiful. And she has also added a few videos that you can watch to learn more about her work. So this is kind of like how uh, a profile could look like. And in this case with Imelda, uh, 
she's a teacher and uh, doesn't do healings actually. So uh, I will show you on other profiles where there is like a section about pricing, etc., or if they accept clients. But in this case, she doesn't. But you can go to her website, and if you're interested to receive a teaching or want to find more about her offerings, you can just go there. So I will look for some other examples that I want to show you. And one is from a man in Peru. And the reason why I want to show you uh, Milton's profile is that he, this is the first profile that we have in Spanish and English. So in a moment, uh, our team, uh, Consuelo and Lucita, will talk a little bit further about the Spanish version of the site. But this is the first sort of uh, bio and profile that we've created for uh, a ceremonialist in Peru. So you can see in the two different languages. And then you will also see here his mother language is Spanish and his original language is Quechan. And all of his uh, titles that he has. And if you look on the right side of this uh, uh, profile, you will see the session pricings, uh, how he offers the sessions, so in person and also through FaceTime and how he accepts payments. And that prices are set on an individual basis and also that he accepts new clients. So then you know you can book an appointment with him. And then there's a button here to, that says contact this shaman. So if you click on the button, you can actually fill out a form and send him a message that will arrive to him and that you can uh, expect a, a reply soon. And there's just a couple more that I want to show you. So if I look in uh, at the US, there's many practitioners there. And I like to show you the Provo, the J and Sweetie Bird. And the reason why I want to show this as well is that um, as far as I'm aware, they didn't have a website, so they made this page their own and uh, they did it very beautifully. Uh, this is a, a, a couple uh, from the Ojibwe tribe in the United States and they're offering teachings now. So they have listed all of their offerings here very ni nicely about all of their upcoming courses and also starting some in December. And there's a whole lot of information that people can go through. And I'm not going to go into all the details, but there's many offerings there, um, like a sweat lodge, ribbon skirt, a bundle back, back making workshop. Uh, there's a lot of different things that they offer. And then you see here a little bit more of the standard information that they filled in, also their modern and original languages, which is really nice. And also their additional healing modalities. Something about indigenous traditional healing and ceremony, bone doctoring and sweat lunch. So all of this information here, and then you can contact them and ask for more information. And the last profile I would love to show you is uh, the one for uh, ancestral medicine, because uh, we don't have only individuals on this directory. So if you're watching and you have a shamanic organization or platform, you can also consider uh, using this platform to uh, list yourself uh, as an organization and link them to your uh, practitioners. So if I click in here, ancestral oh, medicine.
There's the organization, Ancestral Medicine by Dr. Daniel Four. And he basically listed his organization here that will link people to all of his practitioners that he trained. And he also listed kindly all the languages that his practitioners are speaking, all of the areas that they are specialized in as well, the different years of practices and so forth. And his website is basically the linking to the whole directory there. And actually in, on this site, you can also contact the organization for any inquiries. So that is how to find a shaman on our platform. And uh, we have about 100 people and organizations now on this platform. And you will see a lot of from the United States at this point, also a lot who have a, a, a origin in the Indian traditions, but we hope to sort of extend this further and to include more countries, more practices and lineages. So I'm going to go back to a keynote here for a bit, but I think the key is really that um, people can search by these great ways to find a shamanic earth based healer or teacher that feels right for them and to book anything online or in person and the beauty is, of course. Uh, through the energy medicine that you can book anybody you like, uh, even though they don't live in the same country. So that's really great. And uh, we're also updating our user's guide to make it even more uh, practical so people can really make the most out of their experience on our website. So now I want to talk through a little bit about how to get listed as a shamanic healer or teacher. So again, we have the homepage here. And this time you want to click on the get listed button there. And there is quite some information here. And we ask you all kindly if you're considering to get listed to uh, read everything through uh, in detail. Uh, because there are some steps to be taken and information that needs to be ready to uh, register yourself. And um, you can scroll through here. And what we also like to show you here is uh, that we have our um, uh, uh, Cornelia, who's one of the uh, board of the team. Uh, the advisory circle and she's based in Tanzania and this uh, uh, woman has created uh, these beautiful dream catchers by using our Shamus directory logo so we just feel it's really great that uh, this one firewall medicine is spreading and uh, that it's resonating also with the original peoples as well and actually, you will be able to receive this uh, gift uh, if you are getting listed and make a donation as well. So I just wanted to let you know that. And if you click on the button register here, I will just show you smoothly and swiftly how that works. Uh, but as mentioned, just a little bit up front, uh, although we try to make it really as easy as possible, uh, please make sure that you have all the information ready because uh, the registration process needs to be done in one seating. And uh, it will be also great if you can comp complete the information as much as possible. So it will help also our registration team to go through all the information as well. And so. This is the part where you can register yourself and you can see there's like five steps here, your details, your practice, sessions, pricing, accreditation and subscription. Now, I won't be filling in everything. Uh, however, when you would do it, I would recommend you to do that uh, more completely. But this is just for the sake of showing how uh, easy it is to register yourself. So 
this is my name and uh, I don't necessarily need to put in everything to just move forward so I'll just select uh, a photo image that is what is necessary which you can uh, drop in here and then you can crop your image to your liking And then we, as mentioned before, you can uh, also add your modern languages, but also the original languages, which we think is really nice that we've included that. Of course, uh, there's also room to put your own website there. And then we ask also like to write a bio for about 300 words. And you can always go back to this profile and add more to your liking. And then you click on next. So this is the part about your practice. And although uh, we may have not listed every single option here, uh, there's always a button that says other. So you can type something more specific to your practice. Uh, so the first question is about like how you're known in your community. Now we know that many people don't want to call themselves a shaman. And that's why we also have many other titles in here uh, but as mentioned for this as well you have an other title which you can specify what is most appropriate for you or how you're called in your community um, so in my case let's say i put certified shamanic practitioner and paco now i know that on my profile all will be listed but the first that will be shown will be certified shamanic practitioner because that's the first in the alphabetical order. So just to bear in mind uh, with that. Then there's about the origin of your shamanic practice. So whether it's African, Indian, Canadian, I mean, there's many regions here included as well as an other origin, which you can specify if it applies to you. We also have a section about additional healing modalities. These are of course very welcome to enrich your profile and to show you know all of your other expertises and uh this is the area you are more you're most passionate about so uh all those needs and problems that people may be facing to uh tick these boxes on so for example if it were for me for example ancestral issues i tick that on Then there's another section about uh, the ex experiential level of working with a shamanic healer or teacher. So if it's beginner, intermediate, advanced, so you can click either of these or all of them. And also the demographics, the groups of people you're most passionate about or experienced in, and also your years in practice. And then you can click on the next button. This is about the session pricing, so you can either choose dollar or euro, you can choose to put your fees in there or keep them blank, some people keep them blank, and uh, yeah, you can tick on these boxes, whether prices are set on an individual basis, if you offer 50 minutes free consultation, how you offer your sessions, whether it's only in person or also through the internet or zoom how you accept payments, and whether you take new clients. And then you go to next. Now this part is probably one of the most important uh, areas for accreditation. And as Trisha mentioned, we're uh, re reviewing this again uh, to make it more streamlined uh, and more clear for people to come here. And we ask basically people to submit two of the five criteria listed here and if you don't have all the two criteria that you can write in, in your own words uh, why you think we you uh, why you think we sh you should get listed on the directory so these are uh the criteria whether your lineage or ancestrally trained uh, whether you have a referral from a shamanic di shamans directory ambassador or member of the shamans directory advisory circle, 
a referral from a healer or teacher who's already listed on Shaman's directory, a referral from a recognized healer or teacher, a referral from a recognized healer center, retreat, or lodge, or a license or certificate from a recognized shamanic energy medicine program. So you need to click two out of those. So let's say I have a lineage or ancestral trained uh, accreditation. Then I'll type that in and also the email address. So I'll type in Serena Ajanchu, where I'm trained with, and uh, a referral from the Shamus Directory Ambassador. So Uma Freddy. And then I'll just tick the boxes here. I verify. Of course, you can do more than two as well. I must say that. And then you tick these boxes that you've read all the information and you move to next. And now we're almost complete. So this is the subscription page, uh, which you can tick the box uh, that feels uh, best for you. Uh, as mentioned, uh, subscription is basically free for everyone, uh, though it's donation based. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation, that will be, of course, very appreciated. Um, so let's say I would make a donation of $100. And here, if you like to, you can click uh, on this box to uh, receive that free gift or the gift of a, a Maasai uh, wind, cat wind catcher. So that's how it goes. And then you can submit your application. So I hope that shows you a little bit how uh, the site works uh, and uh, to say a little more about uh, the get listed section is that we really strive to be a trusted source, uh, a platform where people would safely would go to and recommend uh, their friends and family as well. Um, and in order to preserve the integrity of the directory, we ask all registrants to submit all the required accreditation sources, uh, because actually we've received uh, many that were not complete or didn't have all the information. So that's why uh, we want to sort of uh, let you know to please be complete and uh, accurate with that. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about the community, uh, because as we talked about the prophecy and that we all want to gather around one fire, it's also very much about building a community um, for shamanic earth-based healers, teachers, but also, of course, for the clients and the curious and to grow this community together. And we have several ways how we uh, can communicate within the community and um, which I would like to show you. Um, so we hold uh, bi-weekly community free live events for all on the second and fourth Saturdays of the month, which is like today, uh, where we invite uh, interesting speakers. Sometimes there's a talking circle as well. So there's always a different topics uh, that you can attend to. We also have for the members, for the healers and teachers, uh, quarterly meetings. And uh, we're about to start uh, next year a uh, monthly ceremony and supervision meetings to uh, support the healers and teachers uh, with their clients and to bring the most out of it, basically, and be there really for their support. We also have shaman to shaman interviews, which uh, Wake will talk about further. And uh, we also want to encourage everyone to sign up for our monthly newsletter so you know what we are up to and you're informed about all the news and uh, events. And uh, we are also active on social media, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube as well. So if you are active there, uh, feel free to follow us there. So now, Wake, I would love to uh, hand it over to you.
and uh, feel free to take your time to talk about your uh, shaman to shaman interviews and if you want me to show the YouTube channel then let me know. Okay, hi. <laughs> What an event. What a, what a beautiful offering. There is so much work behind the scenes on this with Trisha, Mayumi, so many of the other ambassadors. I'm sure you can see it. You can see it right here in front of you. Um, in a way, I wish I had the gallery view on just so I could see each one of you. Um, for me, it's about community. And yet the community starts with each one of us. I will say, Shaman's Directory has changed my life. To know, as many have said, that we are not alone, that there are so many others, each one of us, on our own sacred pathway, on our own spiritual journey. And that um, mo very often, each one of us has had a call um, something that happened in our lives, something that we knew about, but weren't quite sure of, and uh, didn't know if others had similar experiences or that we would be supported in some way. And then gradually there's a coming out, gradually there's a connecting, and gradually there's a, a way that we can be supported by one another. That to me, is what Shaman's Directory is all about. And I've had the honor and the privilege of interviewing, uh, talking, having a discussion with many members of the community. And um, it's not about someone else. Yes, people have medicine, people have experiences to offer that often resonate with our own. But it's like, it reflects our own journey ourselves to see that each one of us um, has a calling. Each one of us is connecting in some way. I've had beautiful experiences with talking to people and finding out about their own personal journey. And so there are about 15 of these uh, profile interviews that are on the shaman's directory site and i invite you to take a look at them and as you become members of shaman's directory uh reach out to me through the profile section and request that an interview or a, that a discussion be had um what i feel is that shaman's directory is right in keeping with the times uh, there's been talk in the Caro, the Andean traditions about Ayu, about spiritual community, that this is something that we're each drawn to. And Shaman's Directory is a way we can experience this sense of community directly. And since it's about each path that we have, that we're traversing ourselves, to see the summit interviews, to have those accessible, um, to watch uh, the shaman to shaman interviews and see yourself reflected there. It's a strengthening in and of itself. And to get to know one another, that to me is the core. Just as important as building our clientele, as offering our services, as reaching out to one another for support in some way. It's getting to know that the people in the directory are us. For me, one part of the shaman to shaman uh, interviews is that it's as if I'm interviewing ancestors of the future. We are those people. And we have, been, we have been invited to the fire. First of all, to have the courage to show up and to declare our own path of spirit. And secondly, to show up around the fire within the circle as we approach this sacred cosmic fire that we all tend and steward, we're filling out the dynamics 
of what shamanism, what energy medicine has to offer. And it's this fulfillment of the promise of Ayu, of spiritual community, that I thought during COVID was um, perhaps in the past. I connected with classes person to person uh, where we could be with one another and touch one another. And yet um, in these days of Zoom, in these days of connecting with each other through Facebook, the YouTube channel is amazing, Shaman's Directory YouTube channel, where there's this beautiful library of the Saturday live events, of, uh, of the offerings that uh, are naturally a part of Shaman's Directory. Uh, the Shaman to Shaman interviews here. Um, this is a beautiful resource that you can go back to again and again and again to f see fellow seekers, to see fellow members of the shamanic community. And it's being supported in our own spiritual practice. Um, again, referring to the Karo cosmology, uh, this is the time of the Tara Pai Pacha, the time of meeting ourselves again. And look at these people in front of you. They are us, and they reflect the courage that we each have, the calling that we're each responding to, the gifts that are growing within us, and, uh, and what we offer to one another and what we offer to the fire. Um, so I just want to say how delightful it is to get to know the people who have been drawn to this work, to get to know one another. And the profiles, as Mayumi has stated, are such a beautiful way to find one another um, and to inform our own journey. Be because at the, its core, I feel like it's about each one of us. Yes, it's about other people, but what for what purpose? It's about our own journey, our own enhancement, our own next step. One of the most fun aspects of uh, doing the shaman to shaman interviews is asking a practitioner, uh, asking, asking someone, a member of the directory, um, what do you feel your next step is? What is your next inkling? Where are you drawn in your life? And I find the summit interviews, the shaman to shaman interviews, uh, what's available through the live events, um, the Saturday uh, events that shaman directory hosts, that I find insights for my own journey. I su find support for what I'm going through. And um, I do want to mention one thing. I just was in contact with Wilbert Salas Atasi, a shaman, a friend from uh, Cusco, Peru. He called me. He's an early adopter of Shaman's Directory. He's an early recognizer of the value of coming forth and sharing. And he's, he said, Wake, um, I, I want to offer something to the community. What, Wilbert? I want to offer a ceremony, a three world ceremony, the Uhu Pacha, the Kai Pacha, the Hanuk Pacha, to bring ourselves into alignment for the new year. Um, a ceremony of gratitude, of thankfulness for not only our own spiritual paths, but for the community that holds us all. So we're working on the logistics of this, but I believe that he'll be able to present at uh, a Saturday live event, January 13th, and this will be a beautiful ceremony. I mention it because it's upcoming. I mention it because it's an inspiration of one of the members of Shaman's Directory, someone who feels inspired to share and to give back to the community itself. So I feel like this ceremony of spiritual alignment, of being ready to give our best to ourselves, to give our best to one another, to recognize that Shaman's Directory is there to support us all. Wilbert wants to be a part of this work. He wants to add 
to the energetic imperative that we have to go further. So I, I couldn't be happier than to be a part of Shaman's Directory. I couldn't be happier to know that you and others are a part of this grand growing community. And uh, it's, it has enhanced itself so much within this last year because of us, because of you, because of your joining, your interest, your willingness to listen, your willingness to offer, your willingness to connect. So I, I celebrate Shaman's Directory. I celebrate the curious. I celebrate the committed. I celebrate all of us who are on our path of spirit. And that path is enhanced so much by all the resources that the directory has to offer and at its core by each one of us together. Thank you. And I hope you'll visit some of our Shaman to Shaman interviews. Um, I look forward to seeing you at a live event, uh, membership meetings, and the like. And uh, it's your involvement that will grow this movement. It's your involvement that will enhance the resources available in Shaman's Directory. Thank you. Thank you, Wake, for this beautiful encouragement and all your words and all about community building and you're being a great part in all of that thank you wake and uh, the next uh, part will be about uh indigenous outreach and elders council which is led by monica mcwitter um, she is uh the director for uh, indigenous liaison for shamas directory so i would love to pass the word to her I mean, hi everyone. Uh, this has been beautiful so far. So thank you to everyone who's sharing about Shaman's Directory because really and truly we're all working together for all of this work, including the Indigenous Outreach. One of the parts of the prophecies of the seventh and the eighth fire is that the people will be given a choice between two roads. It also speaks to elders in our community and in other communities who are asleep to bring their medicines forward. So what Shaman's Directory has really been working at doing is creating a safe place by empowering Indigenous communities globally to bring their medicines forward. So we started doing this by offering, especially for the Turtle Islanders, as much of a traditional way as possible to approach communities. So we began by holding healing circles and talking circles, which happen bi-monthly. And all of you are invited to attend because it's a beautiful space to grow and to learn and experience indigenous culture. We also reached out to elders in our traditional way by offering tobacco. And we held an Indigenous Day of Teaching, which you can see on the YouTube channel. Um, any of those teachings for communities that are working with us and really supporting the work that we're doing. And what we're doing is looking uh, for the traditional teachers globally who may not have ever had the opportunity to bring their teachings and medicines forward and addressing any barriers for that to happen. I always think about one of my greatest teachers and healers. She had lived in the woods for 50 years while residential school was happening and while the 60s scoop was happening, her family chose to live in the woods. And I found out about her because someone told me. And so I was lucky because I had looked for many, many years for traditional healers and teachers to receive teachings that I knew were authentic as much as possible, or that the people, um, as we look, continue to learn and grow, because even every elder I know says that they're a baby in receiving these knowledge. And I find that happens globally, um, that it's not enough for word of mouth. It has to come from a space where these teachings are accessible to everyone, as well as 
knowing that the people who are offering these are traditional because like in our community there are both traditional and non-traditional people and both can be powerful healers so some have a spiritual background and some have traditional teachings and so how do we discern that and this indigenous outreach has really provided an opportunity to speak with various elders from across Turtle Island. Um, for many of the team, they have done this on a global scale as well, and to help see and bring communities and these traditional people forward, where we're able to, again, discern the difference and access is given to every single person, no matter what your background is. And so when you go through Shaman's directory, you can look and see uh, various Indigenous practitioners, teachers from across the world. And when you go through their page, you'll know what is more traditional, if that's what you're looking for, or, and where you may be able to find a beautiful spiritual approach as well. And this led us all to the Elders Council. And so as we were doing this, it was a question of how do we discern between the two and how do we make something that's truly accessible for everyone? Because I am a social worker by day and many of the agencies and places that I work with have not had access to an elders list. And these elders are people who have 20 or more years of experience offering traditional teaching, counseling, being the person in their community that you go to and you can ask any question, no matter what it is, if you're looking for a teaching, if you're looking for an offering, they are there for you as an elder as they would be for us. And the Elders Council is open to everyone. And there's a list right now that can go out to agencies, to hospitals, to schools um, of elders that we know who in their community are coming from this background. So currently there's Monty Brahman, who is from Catawba Nation and he runs like almost every uh, traditional ceremony, all healing, he's a medicine person there. There's Mark Denser, who is of Chickasaw descent. And Mark has run SWAT and been walking the red road for 19 years. He's also worked in social work. There's Cocom Francine, who provides amazing and beautiful women's teachings, which are open to everyone in the community. And there is Wolf Martinez. And Wolf is um, someone who works really hard on the prophecies of the Eagle, Condor, and Quartzel, with Chief Bill Lane Jr., as well as he's been a traditional healer, practitioner, and counselor in this community for more than 20 years. And so this Elders Council is growing and we're always looking for more people to join, but all of them are extremely traditional in their approach. And it's a really, really beautiful, beautiful offering because again, anywhere that has not had access to elders serving any community now has the opportunity to receive this list and anyone can access it as well as all of you. And so if you're just looking for someone that you would like to have a conversation with, I invite for you, um, everyone will be listed by January on Shaman's directory to type in the words elder council in the search bar, and this will come up. It's not about receiving any sort of uh, compensation for them, but about the receptivity and the gift that it is to bring our teachings forward because for so many years, we were not allowed to. And so the fact that this safe, beautiful space is open to the tribes and that people are bringing their medicines forward, as well as sharing their medicines and teachings with other tribes globally where those teachings may have been lost is a huge gift and just a beautiful, beautiful offering. So if any of you are indigenous or identify as indigenous, or if you would like access to elders and would like to know who our trusted list of Indigenous practitioners from Turtle Island may be, please contact me at earthwisdom at shamansdirectory.com. I look forward to how this grows um, and the impact that is going to have 
because again, for so many years, I watched people who were living in an urban setting who were indigenous not have access to these teachings. And now they're brought forward to all people. And so it's a really exciting time and I look forward to this growing. And if you know of any tribes globally or any members that you know who would be a good recommendation or are a medicine in their person in their community, we would love to hear about them. We can do our best to support them, to promote them and uh, to bring them on board to share medicines back and forth with other tribes. So Chima Gwich, and thank you for allowing me this time to share. Thank you, Monica. That's so beautiful. I'm so excited about uh, all of this work and upcoming Elders Council. It's really beautiful to uh, invite all of these Indigenous tribes into this platform. So thank you for all the work you do. Um, now I want to move on to the Spanish support and translation. So I want to welcome uh, Lucita and uh, Consuelo, please. Buen día a todos. Good day to everyone. My name is Lucita Murphy, and I wear a couple of hats here at Shaman's Directory. I am leader of the registration team, and I am a part of the Espanol team for Shaman's Directory. And I want to say hello. Welcome to the fire. So my hat as a registration person it it coincides with Spanish support and translation. Um, I that I I have a great team. I want to acknowledge on registration because they're tremendous support to um, review all the registrations, and um, that's truly important to get authentic uh, earth based healers on our directory. And the reason I brought that up is because in Spanish support, Consuela and I have had to uh, speak with and meet with uh, Spanish speakers to, to fill out their registration forms to be uh, admitted into the directory. And so I'm just gonna explain Consuela real quick what we did with Milton. Mm -hmm. So Milton sent us his bio, which was, um, needed to be edited. He had a lot of Quechua words that we didn't understand. And between Consuelo's excellent knowledge as a Spanish speaker and my own, we came up with the words that um, were able to translate effectively from Quechua to Spanish to English. So it was a, a really fun time for us. We were able to get it done and get Milton admitted. And he's such a wonderful healer. So that's what we do in a nutshell. In addition to that, Consuelo, who is a absolutely impeccable uh, professional translator, the two of us met for over a year, but I'm gonna let Consuelo tell that story. Well, good morning to everyone. And um, it's been really a joy and um, a blessing not only to be part of this directory and this community that I've been looking for a long, long time. Since I was living in my country, I always was attracted to traditional teachings of the ancient communities, but not really having a good way to reach them out. Then came into this country and that, that searching of my soul continue. Um, through different avenues, I was able to uh, learn about different communities, uh, co-workers, and then the books that I have uh, the, the joy to, to read and to start that connection. Then came the training that, you know, in energy healing, which felt like uh, it was, I have arrived to the right destination. And since then, uh, I became part of this community, very active, very grateful for being here. And uh, working with Lucita has been really, truly a joy, a blessing. It's, it's just like uh, any time that we get together to work on this directory and translations and 
everything is like I'm looking forward to that. We have so much fun. It's such a joyful experience. Being part of this community and putting my uh, skills and my training and as a translator and as an interpreter for many years, it came right to the, you know, like a good fit, just what we needed. Even if it means for Lucita and I and any other one who is going to be part of this team uh, to learn a little bit of Quechua and like Lucita said, and any other kind of words that, you know, we need to accommodate and adjust to have our biographies in place, our information in place. But in the in the process of doing that, it's such a such a beautiful experience. It's the way that I can put it. You know, joyful, happy. We we laugh a lot. It's, it's really really something that I am always looking forward to. So I feel very blessed. And uh, like a wake said, you know, this uh, community that we have created. It, it's been a, it, it has meant the difference for me in my life. It is like a, my 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 joy is so beautiful. Is it feels like it, it really fits the needs of my soul and what I've been looking for so many years. In you know since I was living in the in my country in in the Andes. So thank you to everyone. Thank you to Lucita for being such a good partner in translation and um, I am super honored and grateful to be part of this community. Thank you, Consuelo. We have, Consuelo and I have been working and meeting for over a year now to completely translate the entire um, shaman's directory into Spanish as a way to support our Spanish speakers in North and South America and in Europe. It has been an honor to be part of this team. It's an honor to be part of Shaman's Directory. I've been with Shaman's Directory from the very beginning. And I wish to acknowledge Trisha and Mayumi and um, the genius of their love and light to begin this directory. And Wake and Monica, I love you. You're so amazing. and. And, and truly, it does take a village. And here we are, all of us, building this beautiful community for all shamanic and earth-based healers. And I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucita and Consuelo. It's been a joy to be working together and to take this site also to the next level. And taking it into Spanish and uh, really bridging the North and South Americas and maybe also parts of Europe as well, of course. So thank you so much for that. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I want to say like we have actually another video as well uh, with some more ambassadors talking, but I know we've already went over our time. So uh, feel free to move on with your daily activities and we will probably post these uh, ambassador reels as we call them as well on our YouTube channel, but feel free to stay. But uh, I'd like to close our session for today and I really want to thank you all for joining us here around this fire and we hope to uh, see you again next year and uh, connect with you further and to grow our community as well. And um, as mentioned already, if you want to stay updated about our activities, uh, please just check the newsletter. That will be the best way to uh, yeah, be updated about everything as well. And uh, I wish you all a beautiful uh, solstice ceremony as well that is upcoming and uh, to close our cycles from the last period and open up new cycles in for the new year and to bring all the beautiful energy and the seeds that we want to plant uh, to receive all of these gifts as well. So I really hope to see you in January again, uh, where we will resume our work with the directory. And once again, thank you so much.
first thing I want to comment on you, I think you, I think Shaman's directory is a four level doing. Okay. We spend our life connecting people, traveling, taking the news here and there, putting together different traditions, different knowledge and things. It's all connecting and connecting. And this is exactly what the directory is doing. To offer a platform for people to share in a completely open way from different backgrounds, different ways, different styles, to just be honored as part of the whole. We always say something during our teachings. That's so clever. He never gave the whole truth to anybody, to a one single group. Why? Because he wants us to share. And if you really want to get closer to the truth, you really need to learn from all others. No one has the whole truth. We all have just little pieces of the truth. If we put it together in something like the directory, we share a pool of knowledge and experiences and, and the teachings and trainings, we may get closer to what's really the goal, right? to get to know the truth. like to put it in a real framework of what's going on today. Uh, in the world, the word shaman is using, but I think it's used to suggest a, a Gnostic approach to the reality. This is a point of view. Uh, what's the meaning of that? There are usually two ways of being spiritual. One is the logic, the traditional Western, in which you have a set of theology, dogmas, things in which you need to believe to save yourself, okay? The other approach is the Gnostic. The Gnostic experience is the opening to the mystic development. Remember the the standpoint of uh, Houston Smith, the mystic is the top. Then under the word shamans were in the whole world a Gnostic revival. This is not my opinion. Is uh, the Pope when uh, John twenty John Paul the second, who in one book say the new age is a Gnostic revival. He said that. For the Catholic Church, it was a little bit difficult to deal with the new age, but uh, this is uh, his their business, okay? The Gnostic approach is part of the shamanism, of course, but it's part of another spiritual tradition. And when the new age happened was a Gnostic revival, as Terence McKenna say, is a archaic revival. All the ancient traditions experiencing revival. What you are doing is generating a room for the for all these people to interchange their own. Every other tribe, every other civilization, every other religion has the way of healing. But if we start to put them together, we are going to discover common factors, or we are, we are going to honor the diversity, but at the end, as a whole, we are going to produce synergy. And in synergy, the whole is more than the sum of the parts. Just being in a shaman's directory, you are triggering the possibility of the wholeness. And of course, this is going to empower the whole movement, which is moving in the direction of the mystic experience. This is my point of view. I have to tell you that um, it all started because a, a friend recommended you guys. And I spoke to you and I remember arguing with you about the name. 
and you had such a great answer right because there's all this conversation about the shamanic practitioner using that word and and your answer was so good that you convinced me that this came from a, a real vision from your heart and soul and that this was the way it needed to be called to gather the people that needed to come. So you helped me jump over my resistance that I had. And then I started to see who was collecting, who you were collecting. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a great batch of folks. And I'd be honored to be in this in this collective of people serving in this way, this needs to be done. And this is uh, some genius women that are putting their hearts and souls into making this happen. And then I got to meet Mayumi, you know, across the planet and the globalness of it and all of that. And the way you were so welcoming and so open to hearing, you know, what I had to say and, and responding really beautifully and convincingly and excellently. And so it just felt really good. And then I just wanted to call all my friends and say, come on. I am so grateful to everyone that has contributed their heart's fire to uh, creating the um, shaman's directory. Shaman's directory is embodying some of the deepest uh, principles of our heart's fire, which is it's about communion rather than competition. It's about cooperation. It's about honoring all of the different types of expressions of our of our gifts, of healing, of all of the different expressions of our humanness, of our spirit, of our hearts, of our love, of our compassion. Um, and, and that's a rarity in this world, not to just be in your own little universe, but to celebrate the wild variety of expressions of uh, our humanness. And I think that's all embodied in, in the Shaman's Directory. So, um, you know, when you reached out with this beautiful project, I was touched because I personally, in my practice, in my life, in my heart, I am looking for connection. I'm looking to nurture connection. I'm looking to nurture kindness so that we can be more kind towards ourselves, each other, the planet. And to really come from that energy and that's what i really liked in your vision is there's so much wisdom in the world you know i'm a simple guy from belgium um you know finding my own way um, of these these ancient practices um in my case you know with influence of course from the celtic tradition which is my heritage um, but there is so much need um, for these direct teachings that are, you know, these earth-based teachings, they're, they're often very simple. It's like, let's take care of the land, let's take care of the water, all these things. And what else do we need? You know, this is the foundation when we can really come back to that reverence for all of life. And there's so many beautiful wisdom keepers around the world that we can learn from. In my own life, you know, I met my first teachers 28 years ago when I was struggling with suicidal depression and addiction, and it changed my life. Like, it's probably the reason why I'm still here, because I saw their deep respect for the planet, and it touched me. It just touched my heart. And I think that many people who are interested in shamanism, it's probably for a similar reason. There's something in that practice, regardless of which tradition, there's something in there that touches your heart. And what a beautiful idea to create circles, to create this fireplace where we can meet and we can learn 
and I've been privileged with many, many beautiful teachers on my path and I love listening to them and learning because I know that I don't know that much and they help me to remember that life is about this kindness, life is about this connection, life is about you know, seeing the beauty, the profound beauty of all these simple things that we otherwise don't see when we're just living in our heads and our to-do lists. And so I'm deeply grateful for your vision and having, you know, the courage and the energy to bring that forward because it's, it's so needed in these times that we can learn from each other in a way that is beautiful and that is um, helping us to, to remember this reverence for life. Learned about a uh, uh, shaman's directory uh, some time ago, and I, I kind of thought about it for a while, but it's connected to the time that was before, and it is about what we've lost the these original teachings that we had are the solution people are saying what is wrong with this world this is a mess and <laughs> you know oh it's all are you sure that pe people call me all the time and they'll say are you sure there's really hope for the future are you sure there's really going to be a good future um i look to my messages and guidance to say yes but i can see you know very much if i look at the news or if i look at what's happening in the world and the wars and um, I see uh, people having a disconnect from the earth itself, from their spiritual connections, from their spiritual path and their spiritual gifts. This is why people are depressed. This is why people are having anxiety because they are not in touch with their spiritual gifts. They're not in touch with their spiritual connections or their ancestors or their lineages. And they're feeling this emptiness or they're turning to addictions or all of the various things that we're seeing. Do we want to continue on in that way? How can we each and every one of us be the seed that's needed to to be you know doing our spiritual work doing our spiritual path to help bring this higher consciousness that's needed now and i think that's part of it the big great shift the great turning as other people have called it but i see you know people moving through and it's not always easy to do it on your own so i think it is important to either have community or support in some way these are, these are things people, I think again, like in modern society, people often might, there are, I've known people to say, oh, you know, nobody really needs therapy. They could just deal with it on their own. What a harsh <laughs> and horrible, <laughs> that's why people have problems because the, if that's how it is, I would just deal with it yourself or don't deal with it. Well, I think that's why we have a lot of anger. So, you know, like how can we bring compassion and the original teachings talk about those things. They talk about compassion and love and caring the well-being of the people in our hearts and having courage and fortitude, having generosity for others. Really, it's a spirit of giving. Like people talk about the aloha spirit and why do they love it? It's because it's based on love and caring and community and it feels really good in the heart again. Like these, I think what feels good in the heart and following our intuitive guidance, um, these are things that are new to some people, but we want to have the earth, you know, for thousands and millions of years to come for our future generations. This is why we're in it together. So I think this is a very powerful, potent, beautiful time. The more we can see that um, doing our own work, I think that's part of it. Like we can, people feel helpless and they say, oh, I don't know what to do. But I think just saying yes to your own calling, saying yes to your spiritual gifts, these are beautiful ways that we can move forward. I feel emotional too as I say this. It's like, come on, guys. It isn't like wake up. It's like keep waking up. <laughs> you don't go back to sleep. You're like that roomy poem, you know. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. I wish I could recite the whole poem, but look up Rumi and you'll see it. You know, there's that interjection in, uh, in it that the door is round and open the two, between the two worlds, so don't go back to sleep. Well, what I'm saying is, well, you probably will, but you've got some tools 
that will help you jump back into the process itself, the awakening process. Tools, I might add, such as the shaman's directory and the work that you guys are doing with that. I think it's absolutely wonderful. And making accessible some of these shamanic practices to others who are called, you know, to out of curiosity or out of a, a prompting, being prompted by spirit to uh, check into that, find out about shamanic work and shamanic practice. It may or may not be for you, but, you know, check it out. You know, it's not the only way. I don't know, no pretense about that. It's not the only way, but it's a pretty darn good way. <laughs>